Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU, and today we have some fantastic jailbreak news to discuss with you guys, specifically pertaining to iOS 13.1.1, the latest public firmware as of recording this video, and Checkmate, the new boot ROM exploit released by Axiom X that's basically going to change the game of jailbreaking. If you guys don't know about it or you missed our coverage, it's linked in your cards now, as well as the very first link in the description. I definitely recommend watching that video right now before continuing any further in this video because I'm going to be referencing it a lot and this video just builds upon all of the information in that so you kind of need to understand the magnitude of what that means before actually continuing on to today's new information. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get into it, but first I wanted to mention that our post on Best Tech Info, our jailbreak status checker page, does feature updates for iOS 13. So this red no will change to a green yes once a jailbreak actually comes of this. So if you guys just want an answer whether there's a jailbreak or not, you can bookmark this page and check back regularly. It's updated dynamically, so that no will change to a yes the second a jailbreak's out. It is the second link down below in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the new information today. This morning, Axiom X tweeted out the following, quote, hacked. Verbose booting iPhone 10 looks pretty cool. Starting in DFU mode, it took two seconds to jailbreak it with Checkmate, and then I made it automatically boot from NAND with patches for verbose boot, latest iOS 13.1.1, and no need to upload any images. And then he said thanks to Luca Tedesco who helped him with this. So let's go ahead and play the video that he tweeted out while I briefly go over a couple of points that you guys might not know about. Okay, so when he says that he made it boot from NAND, basically that's just the system storage. NAND is a type of non-volatile memory, so that's the flash memory of your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. And then he said, with patches for verbose boot. For those of you who aren't familiar, back in the day, I'm talking about Red Snow and earlier, we had something called verbose boot, which essentially was an option where you could have the device display additional details as to what the device is doing and what's loading during boot up. It was very cool, basically this white scrolling text, and a lot of people opted to enable that option. So here's an example way back, I'm talking eight years ago, of me using Red Snow with Red Snow actually going through the process, the jailbreak process, and displaying a form of verbose text on the screen right there of the iPod Touch. How crazy is that, guys? Eight years ago. I still can't believe that we're here today providing you guys with the latest in the world of jailbreaking. But at any rate, as you can see during that video, the iPhone 10 basically just reboots goes into verbose boot, and then of course goes to the lock screen just as you would expect during a typical reboot. Something like this is only possible if you have a boot ROM exploit simply because you have control over the entire process from start to finish versus just patching the kernel like we have with current jailbreaks. So guys, this is incredibly exciting news. And essentially another way of putting this is that we have the first implementation of the Checkmate exploit in an iOS 13.1.1 jailbreak demonstration. This is the first step, guys, and this isn't going to be the last. It's definitely possible to jailbreak with Checkmate everything we've been saying up until this point, specifically in our last couple of videos on this, is going to come to fruition. So exciting, guys, just beyond exciting. And one last thing I wanted to mention regarding Luca, he did say that he got a reliable implementation of Checkmate written in Pure C and IO Kit, and no need for LibUSB or Python, which is actually pretty great if you guys know about that. It means that you don't have to have those dependencies to jailbreak. And then he said that he has support for certain CPUs as of now and will release eventually. Now I'm unsure on that part, whether he actually will release because he has confirmed himself publicly a number of times that he's out of the jailbreak game as far as releasing to the public's concerned. So we're just gonna have to see if anything will come of that. But remember guys, that Pwn to Own did in fact confirm that he is working on a utility, or at least that he has interest in working on a utility to release to the public to essentially create custom firmwares. Anyway, guys, that's the latest as of now. That's where things stand. That's what the news means. 
that there is progress in the world of jailbreaking toward a jailbreak for the latest firmwares on the iPhone 10 and lower. Remember that this jailbreak will always be applicable. It will always work for every new firmware release that comes for the iPhone 10 and lower. As long as Apple supports it, there will be a jailbreak and there will be a way to jailbreak your devices. Also just note that it is or would be a tethered jailbreak, which means that to actually run your jailbreak stuff, you need to plug your device into a computer and rerun a portion of the utility to boot tethered and to apply that boot ROM exploit. But that doesn't mean that you would lose all device functionality. It would actually be pretty similar to what would happen now if you rebooted a jailbroken device. So for instance, this device jailbroken with uncover, if I rebooted it and I didn't go through the process to re-jailbreak and patch the kernel utilizing uncover, then you know, you wouldn't be able to use anything jailbreak related. Depending on the implementation, it can be the exact same with a tethered jailbreak, provided the jailbreak utility itself doesn't overwrite the kernel. As confirmed in my Twitter conversation with hacker Jake James, the only caveat to this and difference, of course, being that to actually re-enable your jailbroken state, you would have to plug into a computer and rerun a portion of that utility we talked about. Again, if you guys want an explanation as to the difference between tethered, untethered, and semi-untethered, I actually did a great video on that back in spring, linked down below in the description as well. It'll be the third link. The only thing that's irrelevant now is the fact that we once again have a boot ROM exploit thanks to Axiom X. So that's the only thing that's changed. Everything else is the same. I might also go more into depth on the subject in a video at a later point. Let me know if you guys are interested in that, but there's some misconception going on stating that you wouldn't be able to use your device if you rebooted. And of course, guys, this is also great for iPhone 10s and up as well, so A12 and A13, because more people are going to join the scene. Hopefully there will be more security researchers involved, discovering new kernel vulnerabilities, turning them into kernel exploits, and rolling them into public jailbreak utilities. Remember guys, this is going to bring more people to the scene, and that in turn will mean that more will come to the world of jailbreaking. So I hope you guys like this video. Be sure to subscribe if you have yet to. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. And just stick around if you're new to the world of jailbreaking because we're going to play a portion of one of our recent Top Tweaks videos. These are things that you can install and do with your device once it is jailbroken. So here is a small sample of what you can expect once something like this drops for iOS 13. So first up, I don't know if you guys can see this, but up in the top right hand corner, I actually have my battery percentage right there instead of the battery icon. Now this is achieved entirely free with the tweak called battery percent X, but in this video, I'm actually using a paid tweak called Bazzy. And that tweak also adds this green indicator right at the top of my phone, also displaying my battery's percentage around the notch. All right, so for number two, this one is one of my favorites with Face ID devices. This one's called Fast Unlock X. So I'm gonna have to demo this with some B-roll, but basically when you have your device locked and you either tap to wake it or use the side button, whatever way, when you have Face ID enabled, when it normally recognizes your face, you'll have to swipe up from the bottom of the lock screen. But with this tweak enabled in contrast, when your face is recognized with Face ID, the phone will automatically take you to the home screen. No need to swipe. So it's just a quicker way to get into your phone without actually having to swipe up. You just look down at your phone and you're basically taken to the home screen. Now, while we're on the home screen and talking about this, one of my favorite tweaks is actually called Jumper. And it replaces these toggles at the bottom to whatever you want. It even allows you to set multiple icons down there at the bottom so you guys can have multiple shortcuts enabled if you guys want on both sides. So not only do I have my flashlight and camera, but I also have access to multiple of my applications. And it's just as easy as selecting the toggle and choosing what you wanna go into. So that one is called Jumper. Well, like I said, we're starting out simple. I can't forget about this tweak. This one is called bar emoji. If you guys can see right down here at the bottom bar, I actually have my frequently used emojis right there. And I also have translucent messages going on with my messages app, but we'll get into those other tweaks later in this video. Anyway, the one at the bottom that I wanted to show you guys for the iPhone 10, 10s, 10s Max, and 10R specifically is called bar emoji. 
All right, and when you have tweaks like bar emoji and things like that installed, one thing you're going to have to do is hide the home bar indicator. And that is done entirely by this tweak called hide bar X. As you guys can see, the home indicator right here is just absent. It's entirely gone. And so you either love or you hate it. I personally hate it and it's just a waste of space. So I got rid of that home bar right there. Another option that you guys can do is install chroma home bar, which basically cycles through a bunch of colors. So if you guys wanna have the home bar enabled, at least have it colorful and eye pleasing, 